Chesapeake Wine Trail is the trail, it is the artery to our growing wine country here on Maryland's eastern shore. Uh, we have entered a new era of a magnificent Chesapeake wine country. There's all sorts of notoriety going on for it. And right here you see a map of the 14 wineries on Maryland's eastern shore that make up the wine trail that stretches from the head of the Chesapeake Bay and moves and parallels all the wonderful bay rivers and creeks all the way through an arc heading to Ocean City, Maryland. And at the end of that is the first Maryland wine bar in Berlin. Um, this is indeed a very growing component to the landscape of uh, economic development here on the eastern shore of Maryland. It's very important and with me today is um, a, a partner, uh, a client, Doris Mason, Executive Director of the Upper Shore Regional Council and she has helped support the initiative Shore Vines that has been behind uh, the support program that fuels the wine industry here on the eastern shore of Maryland. And I think Doris has some really good observations about the economic development yeah. impacts of the wine trail and the wine country. Absolutely. As Lottie said, the Upper Shore Regional Council is just that. We're a regional planning and development entity. Uh, and literally, we were created to enhance the quality of life in the Upper Shore region. And by Upper Shore, we mean Cecil County and Queen Anne's counties. And so for us, the Chesapeake Wine Trail and Chesapeake Wine Country uh, is so significant because of the economic impact that the trail is already having, but that we expect that it will have to an even larger degree as we develop the concept of Chesapeake Wine Country. Because not only do the vineyards and the wineries themselves uh, have an economic impact, there's job creation surrounding each of them, uh, but there is also uh, sort of those other arteries that go with supporting wine. There's the restaurant industry. Uh, there are, we've had some conversations about the distilleries and the breweries that are coming up in the region. There's the bed and breakfasts, there's the hotels, there are uh, all sorts of other tourist attractions with which we can network to develop an entire um, industry in and of itself that will have an even larger economic impact, we believe, uh, on the Upper Shore region. So it's exciting for us to support, be a part, and even spearhead a part of this effort. It's very uh, important because from an economic standpoint, and I, we've been asked many times how did Shore Vines, which is a program um, that's charged with supporting wine industry growth that's managed by the Upper Shore Regional Council, how it got started. And uh, it got started because um, there were a group of people out there on the shore that were uh, had vineyards because the demand for Maryland grapes was getting very strong. You have to have 75% Maryland grapes in a wine to be a Maryland wine. Yes. And uh, clearly the model of a vineyard business presented uh, a good strategy for many of the farms on the shore to diversify, to keep the younger generation on the farm. Uh, and so we began to pull together resources. Uh, right here in King County, the Economic Development Office uh, uh, sponsored a vineyard management uh, consultant to develop a work plan on how you start a vineyard. But long story and going forward, today after five years of support, um, the number of vineyards uh, on the Upper Shore has doubled. The number of wineries on the Upper Shore has quadrupled. Uh, and we're seeing uh, generally up and down the shore in our wine country over these five years, we've also doubled the number of wineries. So it's bringing new businesses to the shore uh, where we have transportation businesses that will travel up and down the trail to transport people. Uh, we have uh, bottling companies that will help the vineyards bottle their wine, put the labels on. Uh, and the other impact that's uh, going on, and this is, I think, really cool, is that 
the perception lying out there when I got started on this initiative is that there are no good wines to be had in, on the eastern shore of Maryland locally at all, and no one can make a red wine. Well, that is no longer true, and I can absolutely say that because this year at the Governor's Cup Awards that is uh, hosted by the Governor himself and the First Lady, for the first time ever, an Eastern Shore Winery, Bordelot, which is down south of Salisbury, won Best in Show. Not only that, it was for a red wine, an Amarone style. And then completing the whole collective arc, is that six other wineries, Eastern Shore wineries, meddled at the awards. And this is very prestigious because you have over 200 wines over the state submitting and it's a very uh, strong panel of judges, critics, and they're all Western Shore based. So Western Shore heads are now turning and looking at Eastern Shore wines. Uh, another thing that really got this initiative started is the people themselves here. Uh, Jenny Schmidt is a farmer, farming family, and she owns a vineyard management company. She's an ex-president of the Maryland Grape Growers Association, and uh, she has the data that indicates that there are over 450 acres of grapes planted in the state of Maryland. On the eastern shore, uh, she estimates planting in her vineyard management business uh, over about 120 acres. So that equation shows us that the Eastern Shore, I'll call it, the, is the wine basket of the wine vineyard industry in the whole for the state of Maryland. So we are fueling the growth that's going on. Last estimated by uh, the Maryland Wineries Association is that uh, sales for wineries was 30, moving towards 30 million. And the other component that is making the timing really good now to brand our region is that there's a four-state wine region that will involve our wine trail and five others, arcing from the Brandywine Valley in southern Pennsylvania down to the New Jersey wineries, take the Cape May Ferry over and enjoy Delaware wineries, and then come up the eastern shore of Maryland. And you can, this is all in a 90 mile radius. Yeah, one of the, um, I guess, significant pieces of the strategic plan for the Upper Shore Regional Council is supporting agribusinesses uh, all along the shore. And so, uh, as Lottie mentioned, we are not only supporting our vineyards and wineries in the Upper Shore, but I've partnered with my peers. I have two peers, two other regional councils on the shore, each serving three of the rural counties here. We've partnered with them, we've partnered with the tourism directors, because what we'd like to see is, uh, we'd like to see the mid-shore and the lower shore develop more vineyards and wineries so that they're equivalent to what's happening here in the Upper Shore. Uh, a lot more is happening around our vineyards and wineries here in Upper Shore. We'd like to see the trail develop even further, and we feel like we had those networks and partnerships in place to do that. Uh, so that's exciting. But we're also partnering with other agribusinesses that will support what's happening you know, with the trail. We have the Upper Shore Harvest Directory. Uh, in that directory, we literally have 158 agribusinesses. It's a paper brochure, it's a web-based tool, and we have I iOS and Android apps for the Harvest Directory. So that's exciting. Uh, we know that we can do some of those same things with the trail. So there is a whole world to be accessed out there around the trail. I think there's a lot of pointers to the fact that Chestertown could take the crown <laughs> as the capital of Chesapeake wine country because within just a 15 minute radius you have right now five wineries. You have Crow Vineyard in Kennedyville, Maryland which I think really started to turn the meter for the perception of quality wines. And they were smart. They hired an international wine consultant John Levenberg, and he actually works for a number of other wineries on the shore. And he is world renowned, and his wines get attention and win medals. So you have Crow Vineyard, and then crossing over the Chester River, you have uh, Salisa Winery and Vineyards. Um, they have a whole neat strategy. They own the Crimson Wine Bar, heading south on 213, kind of the Route 66 approach. Um, and they combine that with their pizza restaurant. You have um, 
a new vineyard that's absolutely stunning on a beautiful bend of the Chester River, which is called Valley Vineyards. Just out of the gate of their three wines, they won two silvers this year. You'll see them at farmers markets. That's impressive. It is very impressive. Uh, we have uh, Casanelli's on 213. Um, Al's been around working uh, the diversification model, and I think he's going to be moving to a whole other evolution of his business. And there's a new winery that I can't really talk about right on the other side of the Chester River. They invited me over to walk their vineyard. I could not believe this. The red wine was so good. So in our own area, you can do a day trip to a winery and feel like you've had a new experience and you are indeed supporting local here. Right. Dr. Joe Viola, and uh, very early on we worked with him. He is a uh, uh, viticulturalist and enology. So he is has a PhD in understanding grape growing and winemaking. And uh, he has developed a resource at the Y Institute, a test vineyard, where specifically um, he works with Jenny Schmidt, who I mentioned, and other wineries on grape types that do well on the eastern shore climb, that do well in the humidity, that has the resistance. And they also do soil testing there. Um, and uh, the good thing about that research institute is it's right on the shore. Doris's, the Shore Vines Initiative is a model program recognized on the state level because about two or three years into the launch of Shore Vines, which was in 2009, uh, the initiative uh, was honored with a MEDA award, which is uh, given by the State Economic Development, yeah, Maryland Economic Development Thank Association. You. And it was for uh, uh, an honor uh, for an initiative helping to spur regional economic health and development. Uh, and uh, the other recognition that um, the Shore Vines Initiative has for supporting the wine industry is the Verizon Award, which is given uh, every year to by the Maryland Wineries Association to an entity, a program that has helped support the wine industry. So as we put together our resources uh, and programs to fuel the growth of Chesapeake Wine Country and to overview those, um, they would be the obvious ones. There's a ChesapeakeWineCountryMD.com site and social media channels. We do a lot of self-publishing. We like to publish our own articles and we call the series Who's Making Chesapeake Wine Country Grow? Uh, because everyone's interested in the human level and the people that are making it happen here are really interesting people. It would indeed be our hope that everyone maybe after watching this, goes out and tries a local wine, whether they're getting it at the farmer's market or they're visiting a winery, one of the 14 on the, the trail uh, on the eastern shore. Uh, or better yet, they go and visit ChesapeakeWineCountryMD.com and they start reading about uh, the wineries themselves that are featured on that website, the people behind making successful wines, and as well, uh, if people are interested in the resources you need to become a vineyard or winery business, you can go to shorevines.com. It has all sorts of neat information and videos. It has a whole series of videos showing each chapter of vineyard management. So enjoy Maryland wine, enjoy Chesapeake wine, country wine, and take the trail.